Hi, welcome to Oncology for Medical Students. This video is an introduction to colorectal cancer surgery and helping you get your head around the various operations used. So principles. Generally, um, surgery is used in colorectal cancer as a curative treatment, that is to remove the disease completely. So it's normally reserved for cancers that haven't spread. You might find it occasionally being used if there are only one or two metastases maybe, um, with this, a surgery to remove those uh, other tumours as well. But generally it's reserved only for cancers that haven't spread. The aim is to remove the tumour with decent margins to prevent the tumour from coming back and also to remove any surrounding tissue and lymph nodes um, around the tumour to assess the degree of spread. Another aim would be to um, maintain as much bowel function as possible after the surgery. So it can be used um, before um, other treatments so, such as radio uh, and chemotherapy or it can be used after and usually in this case the radio chemotherapy is being used to try and shrink the tumour before surgery to make it more um, excisable. Often um, these surgeries are done by keyhole surgery, laparoscopic surgery, um, but sometimes they have to be done as open surgeries as well, which normally take longer to recover from. In general, the main aim is to do something called a primary anastomosis. So anastomosis is a join of the bowel. So basically you're taking out a segment of bowel and then joining the two ends back together to restore bowel function. Occasionally you might find um, if there's any worry about the, 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 the join and whether it's likely to break up after the surgery, you might form a stoma proximal to that um, join to allow it some time to rest before you eventually join the stoma back together and allow the bowel to work. This is called a defunctioning stoma, but it's less commonly used than a primary anastomosis. So what would you do if you had a right-sided tumour? So right-sided tumours are normally treated with a right hemicolectomy. So this can be done either as an open or a laparoscopic procedure. And the right side of the colon is removed and a small segment at the end of the small bowel. The end of the small bowel is then pulled along and sewn to the, to the colon in a primary anastomosis. Occasionally, as we mentioned before, you might want to form a defunctioning um, ileostomy. So you can see the stoma here has two holes. One of them is connected to the small bowel, and this is the stoma, so the bowel content will come out through that. The other end is connected to the colon, so nothing will go through this other stoma, um, and that will allow the joint to rest and hopefully heal. Then maybe three or so months after the surgery, this um, loop ileostomy can be reversed. Left-sided tumour, you do something called a left hemicolectomy. So again, this can be open or laparoscopic. The left side of the colon is removed. Then the two ends of the bowel are joined together with a primary anastomosis. If you've got a sigmoid tumour, so a tumour in the sigmoid colon down here, again, you do either an open or a laparoscopic procedure, remove the sigmoid colon, and then join the bowel together with a primary anastomosis. With rectal cancers, things get a bit more complicated. The most common operation you'd see is something called an anterior resection. So this means removing the bowel from the front. These procedures can be open or laparoscopic, high or low according to where in the rectum the tumour is, and often, or more often than not, a primary anastomosis is formed. So in a high anterior resection, Again, it can be open or laparoscopic. You remove the top end of the rectum and the sigmoid colon. 
and then join the ends together with the prime basis. With a low anterior section, again, you can use an open or laparoscopic approach. You cut the lower and upper end of the rectum out and, the, and part of the sigmoid, and then join these together in a primary anastomosis. So for very low-lying rectal cancers, unfortunately, you have to take out so much of the rectum that it's not really going to have much function afterwards. So for these tumours, a type of a surgery called an abdominoperineal excision of the rectum is performed. So this is a two-part operation. The first part, you dissect out the sigmoid colon and the rectum through the abdomen. And then in the second part, you excise the anus through the perineum. So you've got your abdominal and perineal excisions. You then remove the end part of the bowel from the sigmoid right the way down to the rectum and anus. And because you don't have a rectum anymore, you can't do an anastomosis. So with these operations, you have to form a stoma, which is an end colostomy, and that's a permanent stoma. It's worth mentioning for some very superficial types of tumours that are in the rectum, you can use a transanal endoscopic approach where you use this piece of equipment um, to excise the, the tumour. This is a less invasive approach than um, opening up the abdomen, um, but is only reserved for very superficial tumours. It's also worth mentioning at this point the role of total and subtotal colectomies. Even though they aren't really colorectal cancer surgeries as such, um, people with ulcerative colitis, if medical managements fail to control their symptoms, they often have the, the whole colon removed as a curative treatment. Colorectal cancer is um, more common, incidentally, in people with ulcerative colitis. So even though the surgery isn't done for that reason, it does completely remove the chance of them getting cancers in the future as well. Another condition um, that's important to uh, recognise is polyposis. So this is benign tumours of the, the colon. So if people have multiple benign tumours, they're at risk of these tumours developing mutations that might eventually make them malignant. So if people have a lot of polyps uh, across the whole colon, often they have the whole colon removed, which again removes the chance of them getting colorectal cancer in the future. So with a total colectomy, what you do is remove the entire colon, including the rectum and anus, and then form an end ileostomy. In a subtotal colectomy, you might leave part of the rectum and then join the end of the small bowel to the rectum to allow normal function and for the patient not to have a stoma. Another option is um, forming something called a J pouch. And this is where you take a loop of small bowel at the end, fold it back over itself and make an artificial rectum, which has storage capacity. Um, so this, again, is another option to try and avoid a stoma. So in summary, we've gone over a number of different operations, including right hemicolectomy, where we're removing the right side of the colon. So left hemicolectomy, which is the left side, sigmoid colectomy, sigmoid tumours, high anterior sections, low anterior sections, and the abdominoperineal excision of the rectum, which requires an end colostomy. And we've also <coughs> mentioned other types of surgery, including transanal endoscopic microsurgery and total colectomy. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this useful again. Um, please, if you've enjoyed the video, uh, subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos we have. Cheers.